But better late than never. Welcome. Let's go, baby. It's crazy. Fucking Anton Lander. I really like the backup. Yeah! Yeah! Bag milk. This is Ceases. Yeah! Ceases. Ceases. Yeah! Ceases. Let's go, baby. Tyler, your rem check is so fucking sexy. Thank you! Ceases. Fucking Anton Lander. It's my favorite. No time to waste, everybody. A better late than never. This is so... No time to waste. Let's get right to it. I got a busy episode. The season is here. Well, you know, you know how it goes. You know how it goes to be an Oilers fan. Your expectations are sky high, and then all of a sudden, a couple of things go wrong, and then all of a sudden, we're getting ready to push the panic button. Is it time to push the panic button? Not quite yet. Not according to me. Welcome to Better Late Than Never. As always, I start off the podcast by saying thank you to the audio department for being the title sponsor. Of course, the audio department works to create a safe space for creativity and collaboration for artists and musicians to realize their potential and share their message through sound and story. Right on White Ave, everybody. 6916 82nd Avenue Northwest. Some people that have recorded there, in case you're interested. Shout out, 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 out. Striker, Royal Tusk, the Dungarees. Come on. Put your name on that list. If you don't have any tunes, time to start writing. If you don't have any tunes in your heart, well, maybe a book up and go to a podcast. Go check it out. The audio department.ca. I want to thank them again, again, again. Thank you for being here. Well, where should we begin? Where to begin? I will start off with some personal stories. I just want to say thank you to everybody that came out to Soho on Saturday for our season launch party. It has been three years since we've been able to throw one of those. A certain little thing got in the way and it's kind of prevented us from doing all the kinds of fun shit we normally do. So, on Saturday, Soho, downtown, Jasper Ave, we got to get together and watch an Oilers game, and it was just fun. We raised a bunch of money for Sports Central, got to meet some new people that I hadn't met before that uh, you might even be listening to that right now that we met on Saturday. It was a good time, so I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that came out. We had a blast. The results weren't what we wanted. That probably would have, you know, set the tone for a different night, but... I was glad that we were able to get all together. So I want to say thank you to every one of you for coming. Thank you to the staff at Soho for treating us so well. And thank you to Riff Raff. Did you guys stick around to watch the ACDC cover band? I did. I watched a little bit of it anyway, and then I went out for Tyler's birthday. But great night overall, outside of what happened on the ice. Another thing I learned on Saturday, I didn't know. I didn't know. I was trying to get an Uber home, right? I went down, parked the Alfa Romeo outside of Soho. Shout out to Alfa Romeo of Edmonton. Parked the Alfa Romeo outside of Soho. Left it there. And then I was thinking, I was like, well, I kind of want to party with the boys tonight. That's what I want to do. So drove it home, Ubered back downtown, went back into Soho, finished up, went out for Tyler's birthday. Then after that, I couldn't get an Uber, at least not at a rate which I find acceptable. If you know me for any length of time, and I'm talking about any length of time, one of the first things you'll learn about me is that I'm incredibly cheap. It doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter where we are or who I'm with. I am one of those people that just, if I can get away with spending less money, I'm going to do it. If you follow me on Instagram, hi, my name is Bag Milk. I post cheese deals all the time. I stock up when that shit's on sale. I don't want to pay full price for anything. So, getting back to Saturday night, the Uber surge pricing was crazy. I couldn't, I couldn't flag down a cab. I missed. I just couldn't. I couldn't get one. They were all busy. That's fine. So, me and the missus, we found some scooters, and we decided that we were going to scoot home onto the West End. Now, if you can picture this mentally in your brain, where Jasper Ave is, and where West Edmonton Mall is, I'm in that general area in the West End. Picture the commute that that is. We want to do it on scooters. We thought we were going to do it. We found two scooters. We were ready to roll. We start rolling out west. But then you know what happened? I learned about zones. I learned about zones. The two of us, we were flying. We were rolling. We were just cruising. We were having a great time. We were having great laughs. 
taking pictures, scooting, living that scoot life, and then all of a sudden what happens? Nothing, because they shut off on me when I hit 149th Street. <laughs> I think in total, the apps that I was on there were like five, five point something kilometers. It wasn't enough for me. I would have taken it all the way to my house had I not have there not been a zone. So what happens is you drive and then they just shut off and they beep at you and they're like, you are out of the zone. You need to turn this thing around. So then we just had two scooters. We had to leave them there on the sidewalk. Nowhere close to our final destination or where we even picked them up from because of this zone problem. I didn't know. So I learned something. I was upset about it. I was having a great time. I love those scooters so much. I want to ride everywhere on those. I actually want to buy one. I don't know if you can just buy one outright, but I think you can. There's somebody in my neighborhood that there's no way. There's no scooters out here, and now I know why. They're outside the zones. But there is a guy in this neighborhood somewhere around me in this general vicinity of the Castle Milk that they have got one. Next time I see him, I might just flag him down. I might just say, hey, man, where did you get that thing? Because I need one. I also, there's one of those guys that's got like, have you seen the things where you stand on the side of it, and it's like a singular wheel in the middle i don't even know what to call it it's like a there's a one wheel and you stand on both sides of it it's almost like a pogo stick but with an engine <laughs> i don't know you know what i'm talking about anyway i want one that has nothing to do with the oilers or anything i guess i'm kind of rambling we are here we are already six minutes into the podcast and i haven't said shit about anything so this started off as saying thank you to everybody that came to soho i'm gonna end it there again I'm looking forward to the next event because life is just better when the nation is able to get together. The last couple of years have prevented us from doing it as much as we like. We got to throw some playoff parties last year. That was cool. But we generally have more than just a handful of events every year. So I was super excited that we were able to do our first one of this year. You know there's more coming, including, including the nation, Oilers Nation's 15th birthday party. We don't know exactly what it's going to be yet, but I was talking to Nation Dan the other day at HQ, and we're going to plan something good. Because 15 years, can you think about it? Like, fuck, man, that's a long ride. It's a long ride. So it's about 15 years, founded in 2007. I would have showed up in about 2008. So 14 years for your old pal, Bag Milk. What a run. What a run. It's amazing to see how things have changed, you know? It's amazing to see how things have changed. What hasn't changed, however is Oilers fans and their love of the panic button. And I get it. You know, expectations are sky high on this team. Sky high. They made it to the Western Conference Final last year. We got the two best players on earth. We have an upgraded goalie situation. Well, I mean, depends who you ask. I still believe in it, but depends who you ask. And they lost two of the first three. Two bad starts in there. Well, three bad starts. They gave up... The first three goals of Vance Vancouver, they came roaring back with five straight. They won that game. Okay, fine. They won the game. You don't want to start that way. Saturday against Calgary, they spotted them. The Calgary scored. Cody CC responded immediately. Great. No problem. But then they gave Calgary three more, and all of a sudden they're up 4-1. It is impossible to win in this league if you're spotting teams a field goal. I don't care who it is. We saw it again last night with the Buffalo Sabres. Sabres score. Darnell Nurse responds, okay, cool, we're good. Oilers couldn't capitalize on their chances. Buffalo, on the other hand, did exactly that. And what happened at the beginning of the second period? Two quick goals. Boom, boom. All of a sudden, the Oilers are down by two. They came. They found a way to crawl back to within one in the dying seconds. Goal from my boy Ryan Nugent Hopkins. But again, they're trailing and chasing the game. They're chasing the game. And that is where I'm going to start in the news. The news is brought to you by the audio department. You too can sponsor the news if you like. But for now, I'm going to tell you about the audio department because their staff are very handsome. The audio department.ca, go check it out. Good. Good. Starting things off, some things just don't change here in Edmonton, do they? Nope. And they just don't because our beloved Edmonton Oilers have had a poor start in all three of their games to start. Vancouver, season opener, not a great look. Dropping the first three goals against what turns out to be a terrible Canucks team. Awful, in fact. Good news is, Connor McDavid went full Connor McDavid. They came back to win. 
We're not going to complain about the win. We're not going to poke too many holes in it because ultimately they won. Unfortunately, the next two games, they did not. As I mentioned off the jump, we were at Soho on Saturday for our season launch party. What happened? Not a whole lot of good things outside of the pizza I ate. Pizza was fantastic at Soho. The effort the Oilers put in on the ice, at least to start the game, not so much so. They were slow. They allowed Calgary to basically do what they wanted. They were giving up pucks on mass. They just looked bad. And for a team with high expectations this year after going to the Western Conference Finals last year, it's just not good enough. It's just not good enough. And when Jay Woodcroft was asked today after practice about the mistakes the team's making that are ending up in the back of the net, just like we saw again last night against Buffalo, here's what he said. We also understand that within a hockey game, Two good teams playing at a very competitive level. Teams are going to have good moments. You, you build that into the game. Um, it's the it's the area errors within our control that we think we can do a better job at. The errors within our control that we can do a better job at. There are so many errors that need to get cleaned up. Like last night against Buffalo, how many back passes to no one in particular were there? They were just throwing pucks into the middle of the ice, hoping for a sexy play. And I'm telling you, that doesn't have to be that way. The Oilers have to appreciate getting greasy. Down the stretch last year, when they were playing at their best leading into the playoffs, the Oilers were scoring ugly goals. They were getting shit done right around the crease. They were having shit bang in off their face going in the net. Now it seems like they're looking for the pretty tic-tac-toe play. And well, I love to see those as much as the rest of them. There's nothing sexier to me than a very, very greasy goal at a timely point in the game. And right now, the Oilers just aren't getting them. What else you got, Woody? Uh, As we move forward, and you never know when the most important minute of a game is. So it's it's, uh, important to make sure that you're alert and on your toes at all times. Most important minute of the game for the Oilers, at least what they should say to themselves, is the first fucking minutes of every period. Because at this point, they just keep screwing things up and shooting themselves in the foot. And then they have to try and battle back. They have to try and fight their way back into the game. And that doesn't have to be that way. Just show up ready on time. Again, I've talked about this a million times over the years, but I think the Oilers need some Norwegian death metal in the room. People are committing crimes because of that music. If that's not enough to get you fired up to play the Buffalo Sabres or the Calgary Flames or tomorrow the Carolina Hurricanes, I don't know what it is. They need some crime music in there. Maybe that's just my opinion, allegedly in my opinion. I don't know. I'm just, you know, thinking, thinking out loud, right? I'm thinking out loud because that's what we do. Trying to solve some problems here trying to solve some problems, and I don't know how to do it other than Norwegian death metal. Is that the answer? I don't know. Could be. Should be. But nobody's asking me my opinion. They should. Again, I should be a consultant of some kind. At least in my opinion, right? Of course. Next up, I I just got to talk about our boy Dylan Holloway. We had high hopes for the guy after I awarded him the Ty Ratty Award for the preseason champ. We know that the preseason is not the regular season, and that's why we have a lot of fun with that, and that's why I gave him the Ty Ratty Award. He's earned the spot to play on this team, but I don't think I'm talking out of school when I say that his first three NHL games, at least regular season games, that is, they just haven't gone the way we probably would have hoped. They just haven't. And... That's annoying and it's frustrating and I wish that he could have just come in and hit the ground running like in a way that you don't normally see from a 20-some year old, but that's not the way it goes. That's not the way it goes. And then to make matters worse, last night he got absolutely blown up. Absolutely blown up by uh, Ilya Labushkin. A lot of people were upset about it. I get it because he's a star player and he got hurt and you never want to, well, not a star player, but you know what I mean. And he got hurt and you don't want to see that. Left the game in the second period, did not return. He did not practice today either, but I just, man, I couldn't think of a worse way, a worst opening three games just personally for the kid. I feel bad for him. He needs something good to happen. What he needs is somebody to bank a goal in off his ass or something. So he starts to get a little bit of confidence. It goes, oh yeah, I can do this. Probably overthinking a little bit. Maybe a little bit nervous. Again, none of this is unexpected, at least to me. But ultimately, we need Dylan Holloway to be better. But first, we need him to be healthy. So today after practice, Jay Woodcroft was asked for an update on Holloway. Didn't give us much, but here's what he said. 
Hi, Jay. Uh, just any word on uh, Holloway? You hate to see a guy get a hit like that, especially a guy that... Yeah, you know what? I, um, sorry for that. I, I don't have the official update. I did see him. He seemed to be in good spirits. He had on his nose, uh, but I don't have the official update for you. If I don't get it for you by the end of the day, then certainly first thing in the morning, okay? So the Dylan Holloway update is that there is no update. A little bit of a secret a little bit of a secret. I don't know if I appreciate the secret, but hey, I'm used to NHL coaches not wanting to talk about what's going on with their players. Right? No surprise there. It sucks, but it's the way it goes. In other news, changing gears, we got some roster moves that happened this week. Marcus Niemelainen came up. Brad Malone was loaned back to the Condors. A lot of people were excited about it, myself included, because I believe Marcus Niemelainen offers a flavor of defense on the back end that the Oilers just don't have anywhere else. With more at-bats, with more time, with more seasoning, I believe that Marcus Niemelainen will be a big player on the Oilers' back end. But in the meantime, what he does is hits like a truck and he makes forwards keep their head up. Last night, he did that. He was hitting people. He didn't have like a monster hit or anything like that, but you notice his physicality. And for a team that some people are already calling soft, well, they need a little bit more of that. It can't just be Darnell Nurse on the back end pushing, hacking, and slashing. There's got to be someone else. And I'm glad that Marcus Niemelainen is available. Again, the pressure can't be on him to turn this thing around and make the, and fix the defense. But what I can say is that he's going to make people think about flying down his wing with their head down. That's what he's going to do. And he does it well. He does it well. And for Brad Malone, he's being loaned back to the Condors. I bet he's still in Edmonton. I bet he didn't go anywhere. But... What I would say is that he's the kind of pro. He's been around a long time. He knows what the role is. Sometimes he's going to play. Sometimes he's not going to play. Sometimes he's going to be in Bakersfield. Sometimes he's going to be up here with the Oilers. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But what I do know for sure is that the Oilers have to... Whoops, bump the microphone there. What I do know for sure is that the Oilers have to fix their shit because the next three games that they've got on the schedule are not going to be easy. Tomorrow, which is Thursday, the 20th, they're playing Carolina Hurricanes. That's my Stanley Cup prediction, is the Oilers first Hurricanes. This is going to be our first taste of what that looks like. Well, fortune teller bag milk. But again, the Carolina Hurricanes are a really good hockey team. And if the Oilers play as flat as they did to start the game against Calgary or Buffalo or Vancouver, well, specifically the second period of the game against Buffalo, Vancouver or Calgary, it's just not going to work. Carolina will eat them up. Have to have a better effort from the crease on out tomorrow. I'm expecting Jack Campbell to be back in net. No, I'm not giving up on Jack Campbell either, you fucking weirdos. Yes, it sucks. He allowed seven goals in his first two games. But I I want you to go back to those Calgary highlights and tell me which ones were his fault. Was it the breakaway? Was it the seeing eye shot through a bunch of traffic that came from the point? Tell me, what was his fault? Because I'm going to tell you, there was not a whole lot that was his fault that I want to hang on him. Do you want him to make an extra save? Sure. But throwing him out with the bathwater like some people are already is just fucking crazy. And you need to chill. Or you need to go outside, get a little vitamin D. It's beautiful in the city. It's 20 plus degrees today. It's late October. Take advantage of it. Stop complaining. It's three games into the season. Now, if they lose the next three, Carolina, St. Louis Saturday, Pittsburgh Monday, then next episode of Better Late Than Never next Wednesday, we are absolutely going to complain and we might even be pushing the panic switch. But until then, let's just chill. Let's chill a little bit. Changing gears. The NHL released a bunch of their reverse retro jerseys today, so I just want to run through some people that I thought did a really good job of it. Uh, the Oilers jerseys, we'll start with there. A lot of people are annoyed by them. A lot of people don't like them. I actually liked the Todd McFarlane design when it came out back in the day, so I was interested in them bringing it back. I could have done without the orange. I would have rather them just bring back that jersey exactly as it was and bring it forward, but I don't hate the orange. I don't mind it. I don't think uh, the vitriol that's being spit towards that jersey design is worthy of it i think it's a little bit of an over exact overreaction let's be honest you're not going to buy one if you don't like it they're going to wear these three times who cares for me what i thought was i like that the Oilers did something a little bit different they just didn't just keep their normal logo the classic logo i love that logo and change the jersey color that's lazy to me so i'm glad they did something different and i'm glad it wasn't just something lazy like writing edmonton across the chest and calling it a day right other ones that I kind of liked that I saw so far, the Nashville Predators, I hate their jerseys, generally speaking. So 
thank you for not bringing back the mustard color that they had in the early 2000s. Absolutely awful. Uh, the Colorado favor Colorado avalanche. They did a great job. They did the Nordiques Jersey a while ago. They don't have many others to choose from in terms of the avalanche era. So the original logo, everything it's great. I liked it. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks, everything about it works. Johnny Canuck logo. It's good. The Jersey is in fact way better than the team on the ice. So you got to like that Calgary flames. Fuck the flames. How was that? Them and their jerseys. It's annoying that they're very good. So I'm going to give them down marks on their jerseys. I'm also going to give them down marks for, uh, you know, Saddle Dome may fall on people's heads. My laptop sounds like it's going to take off right now. I don't know if that's coming through in the mic. Can you hear that? She's working overdrive in these streets. Podcasting ain't easy, playboy. Anyway, new jerseys came out. If you are interested in the Oilers jersey, if you like it, if you don't like it, I want to know. Hit me up. Hi, my name is Bag Milk on Instagram, JSBM Bag Milk on Twitter. For our friends at Day, uh, Betway, I've got to talk through my Betway pick of the day. Today, the Colorado Avalanche are playing against the Winnipeg Jets. I'm going to go ahead and say this bet of Shifley and McKinnon both getting a point. They have that in the pre made bets on Betway, and I like it. Shifley and McKinnon both getting a point tonight. I'm expecting a high scoring affair in Colorado today. So I'm going to put a couple of little shekels on that over at Betway. I'm going to see what comes back. That is a plus 115. So I'm going to double my money up tonight. I can feel it. I can taste it. Looking at some of the bets from yesterday, though, I cannot say the same. In fact, I struck out yesterday against the Sabres. Ryan Nugent Hopkins to register an assist. He did not. He scored a goal. I kind of wish I went with the point. Ryan Nugent Hopkins to register a point as I had originally planned, but I chased the dragon a little bit on the odds and I got burned for it. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl to each score a power play point. Whoops. That one on paper at plus 145 seems like the easiest money you could ever make, but did that happen last night? No. Frank, your thoughts? That's what I thought, buddy. That's what I thought. The risky business pick for yesterday on well, my Betway daily picks was Leon Dreisaitl and Evander Kane both to score. Whoops. That didn't work. That was at a plus 300. Again, risky business. That bet is chasing the dragon, but you know what? It did not work whatsoever for me yesterday. So my Betway pick of the day for today is Shifley and McKinnon both to score a point. That's 115. So that's the game on Wednesday. So we'll see how I did tomorrow, but I'm guaranteeing I'm putting that money in my bank. I'm guaranteeing it. And by guarantee, I mean don't guarantee at all. Bet responsibly. Don't bet with your heart like I did yesterday against the Sabres. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. Well, sometimes, sometimes it just blows up in your face, right? Sometimes it blows up in your face. And that's how we wrap up the news. The news is brought to you by the audio department.ca. Very handsome staff, excellent facility. Go record a mixtape, drop some bars, maybe start a folk band and land at Folk Fest next year. But it all starts at the audio department.ca. You're listening to Better Late Than Never with Bagged Milk, where facts. Plus bollocks equals factor bollocks. Yes. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. For my friends at Trilogy Oilfield Rentals, it's time for the Righteous Sack Beating. Check it out at TrilogyRentals.ca. Of course, they are an established provider of oil field rental tools with full-time operating units in Provost, Weyburn, and Kindersley. They also provide seasonal and project-specific stations in Fort St. John, Fort McMurray, Lac La Biche, and others as customers require. I'm still waiting for somebody to tell me what coil tools are. K-O-I-L. I'm waiting. I've been trying to learn here what these tools mean on Trilogy's website. We learned fishing tools. I thought you were just going out to the lake. You're doing a little casting. Maybe you catch a perch. That sounded fun, but what I learned is fishing tools means you, you fuck something up. You had a problem. Fishing tools are a fixer tool. I'm learning. What do the coil tools mean? K-O-I-L. That's what I want to know next. TrilogyRentals.ca. Righteous Sack beating today. I've talked about it a bunch of times already. 
and I think I'm just going to go all in on it. The Oilers' inability to get themselves motivated to start on time is driving me fucking bananas. It's one thing to see them come back and win like they did against the Vancouver Canucks, but there was a lot of luck there. There was a hat trick by McDavid mixed in there. There was a lot going on that led to that win, and I'm telling you right here and now that they cannot keep spotting teams' field goals and expecting to win in this league. We saw it against the Buffalo Sabres. Down by one, tied it. Down by two, could not come back and tie it, even though they were putting a hell of a push together at the end of the game. This is just ridiculous now that it doesn't matter which coach behind the bench, which GM GM up in the stands, which players are on the bench, actually. The fact that the Oilers can't start on time goes back to MACT days. Does that make sense? Dallas Aiken seems they just suck, so I'm just writing them out entirely. Mac T days, was this a problem? I don't remember it being a problem, but it might have been. Certainly was for Tom McClellan. Absolutely was for Ken Hitchcock. Was for Dave Tippett. And now Jay Woodcroft is dealing with the same issue again this year. And I don't know what the solution is. I don't know what the fix is. Again, Norwegian death metal. That's my recommendation. I'm just putting it out there. I'm going I'm to need to audit that playlist. I need to see what's on there because if there's a bunch of Drake going on, it's not working. I like Drake as much as the next guy, but that is not angering up the blood enough. So I don't know what we need to do to get the team to start on time. Do we need to tell them that the game starts 30 minutes earlier? They got to go out there, ready to go. They're like, yeah, fuck yeah, puck drop 630. Then you go, oh, wait a minute, Zamboni's still on the ice. Is that what we need to do? Do we need to shock people with some kind of zapper on the way out of the dressing room? I'm I'm game for that. Maybe we can go to the dollar store and we'll get some of those electric paddles that are meant for zapping flies. And every time that somebody walks by, give them a little zingo on the, on the ears. You ever touch one of those things? I have only with my finger, not my face, but I can tell you one thing right now. If you get zapped on the face with one of those bug zappers, that is going to get the blood pumping. I don't think there's a rule against it. There might be some kind of like, I don't know. Are you allowed to say electrocute your employees? Because if you are, I'm going to bring one of those to the office. And as soon as Waz, Waz, I know you're listening to this. If I catch you slacking, boy, I'm going to zap you with my zapper and you'll know I mean business. And you know what's going to happen? He'll be cranking out TikToks like no one's business. Waz will go from zero to a thousand miles an hour. And all I had to do was zap him once on the year. What about Zach? Zach writes a ton of articles. I'm going to sneak up behind him and give him a zap. Boom. You won't even see it coming. I'm like a ninja that way. Basically, I'm just coming up with ideas here. They're all good ones as far as I'm concerned. So I'm looking right now on Amazon. The Oilers have to invest, I'm going to say, a total of $50. You can get about five of these babies for 50 bucks, And they look decent too. This one even has adjustable wattage on it. I'm going to crack that baby up to 10. I want that baby maxed out. I want a zap from me to mean something. It's either that or electric dog collars. If the boys start slowly, they're going to be wearing an electric dog collar as a neck guard, and I will zap them from the stands. I volunteer for this position. All I need is that the Oilers give me the zappers, the controller that goes with the zappers, and free tickets to the game every night. It's not too much to ask. They make a lot of money. I've got very good ideas, and I think this is going to help. So if you want me to electrocute the Oilers, I recommend one, writing a letter to OEG saying, hey, we want bag milk. He's got great ideas. He belongs in the room. Two, write a letter to your MP. I don't know what the government can do, but maybe they can help me with this because we need to think outside the box. Gregor has been talking about, you know, well, this was a while ago. He was going to bless the dressing room or something. I don't know if we need to get that far yet. That was when the Oilers, we were still in the middle of the decade of darkness. That's when he was talking about that, but maybe we need to get there. I'm going to start with Norwegian death metal. Then I'm moving to electric bug zappers. Then I'm moving to dog collars. And then we'll go with, you know, cosmic shit if we have to. All I know for sure is that we have got some very tough games coming up on the schedule. And the Edmonton Oilers cannot start as poorly as they have. Because if we are sitting here next week and I'm talking about a team that's 1-5, in I'm going to lose my shit. Does that make sense? There you have it. The righteous act beating. Frank, thoughts? Agreed. Couldn't have said it better myself, buddy. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. You're listening to Better Late Than Never with Bagged Milk. I would suggest you like and subscribe right now. Otherwise...
<clears throat> the puppy gets it. <laughs> The voicemail is brought to you by my friends at Trilogy Oilfield Rentals. That's right, they doubled up. They get the righteous sack beating and they get the voicemail. You want to sponsor this? You can. I'll let it happen. Email me, bagmilk at oilersnation.com. You want in? I've got room for you. All right, we got uh, about 15 voicemails to get through here today. Let's check out what is going on, what is on your mind. This week I asked... What are your first impressions of the what are your first impressions from week 1 of the NHL season? Obviously we're talking a lot about the Oilers. Before I get to the voicemails, I'll check in on Twitter to see what's going on and the overreactions are just as impressive as I thought. Fall for Bedard, the com- <laughs> and commence our 15-year dynasty. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Uh it's still early, but not too impressed with the defense right now. Too soft. If they can build on the third period last night, they could turn things around. Jaden says, starts are awful. Goalies have looked good, in my opinion. Holloway is not NHL ready. Nemo over Broberg. If we can play like we did in the third period all game, we will be a force. Jeff says, the Oilers have got to figure out why they start games so poorly. It's been a thing across multiple coaches, GMs, and rosters. How is this so consistently a problem, yet doesn't ever get fixed? Adrian says, cautiously optimistic. Clearly some cobwebs being shaken up, but we're going to get better. Campbell will get better. So will Stu. The top nine will start to get going two over the next few days. Still need our D-men. Still need a D-men or two. Me thinks left side specifically. The good captain says it's three games. Everybody relax. Rusty says it's too early to panic. Sloppy mistakes led to a couple losses, but it's far too soon to panic. Soon to panic. Colorado and Tampa both started slow the last few years, so we have nothing to really worry about yet. Woody and the boys will put it together. Oilcoholic says need some D. Sherry says I'm not panicking. 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 Rusty and sloppy. Need a better start and defense. Colin says, scares me how quickly we go to McDry combo in some situations, setting the tone early that we don't trust our deep forward group. Ryan says, disappointed but not worried. Having an entire offseason to mentally reset and kick the habit of not starting on time and they continue to have the same trend is frustrating to see. Got to figure out something with the bottom two pairs since all four have not been good. So that's coming in from Twitter. Let's see what we get on the old voicemail machine. Connor? Hey, Big Milk. Long-time caller, first-time listener. Wait, scratch that. Um, I wouldn't say it's pure panic, but I'd say it's more disappointment right now, especially being down in Calgary. I'm taking a lot of shrapnel from coworkers and friends here. But nothing I can't handle. been through the decade of darkness, so you know how it is. Anyways, thanks. Have a good one. Connor, we need to win for you. We need the We need Mega Connor which I'm sure you'll accept me calling him to have the boys turn this around for you. You are behind enemy lines. You're in Calgary and I don't want to hear you taking shit. Gordon knows that we took a lot of shit from flame fans over the battle of over the decade of darkness. We don't need to start now. Besides flames fans. They basically looked like they won the Stanley cup after winning one regulation game against the Oilers. One that they almost blew again. Don't worry about flames fans. The Oilers will turn this around for you. Hey, Bag Milk, Presto again. What's up, Presto? Uh, Listening to the podcast pretty much as soon as you put it out, listen to you talk about yourself and about your car. Um, I'm older than you. I've worked my bag off my whole life. I've been working since I was 12. You have, like, the coolest job in the world that any Oiler fan would want. Thank you. So don't sit there and say, you know, I'm not one of those guys to be bougie and all that shit, dude. You work freaking hard. Be proud that you were going to go buy yourself something with the money you earned by working your ass off. Then you said that, you know, they hooked you up and that's really cool. But you also said they've tried to hook you up and you kept saying, no, let yourself have some of the perks of what you do. You do it because you're an Euler fan and you're really good at it. So when someone offers you something because of your hard work and they obviously respect what you do, let it happen. Not saying you got to throw your face out there, jump up and down or whatever. It's awesome that you were that humble and grateful and thankful. More people in the world need to be humble and grateful for what they have. And that was just an awesome segment. But, dude, let yourself enjoy it. 
Don't think you're bougie because you want to go spend your hard earned money on yourself and make yourself feel good because nothing is better than a nice ride. So enjoy it, man. You deserve it. Keep up the good work. Ciao. Presto. That is probably one of the nicest voicemails that anybody's ever left. Um, yeah, I don't like talking about myself and even things like when people ask me about the car, I love the Alfa Romeo. It's beautiful, but you're right. (laughs) I did say no to a bunch of cars and you are right. I do need to enjoy stuff a little bit more. Um, you're a hundred percent right. It's almost like you're my psychiatrist telling me the exact same thing. Thank you for that. Presto. That was very, very kind of you. I appreciate that very much. I'm very embarrassed actually having listened to that and my face probably turning red. Is my face turning red? A little bit. Yeah. Mrs. Confirmed. A little bit red. Dan, you're up. Hey, Bag Milk. It's currently about 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon. I was just listening to the Real Life Podcast. And uh, I wanted to hedge a bet vocally that I hopefully pays out. Oh, uh, boy. Wanye's car breaking. I'm going to say it was an upper control arm or a lower ball joint that shit the bed on him. I would like to know if that's actually what happened uh, on the next episode of Real Life. If you ask him, if I find out on Monday, cool. If not, I expect to know by Thursday. Yeah, so if you were listening to Real Life last week, Wanye told a story of going out to his car in front of his house that was parked on the street in front of his house. And when he goes to put it in gear, did not move forward. He goes to put it in reverse, did not move forward. He gets out and looks at the car. His front right wheel was basically perpendicular to the car. I don't know shit about mechanics, but I do know that the wheel is not supposed to point the wrong way. Right? So he did bring it to the folks at 780, and it sounds like someone legit hit him. It was a hit and run, allegedly. We don't have any idea how it happened or who hit him, but it sounds like someone legit hit his car and he had to pay like, I don't remember what he says. I don't remember what it was, but I'll let him talk about how much he had to pay to fix it, but it wasn't cheap. And I can only imagine how annoying that is going outside just to get in the whip and go to work. And all of a sudden it doesn't work. (laughs) Like what the fuck is that? If you were hitting people, leave a note at least you weirdos. Like what kind of psychos are driving around out here? Like that's just unbelievable behavior nick thoughts Bag milk what's going on first of all this is going to be a bit of a random voicemail and you know (laughs) i've left some doozies yeah i've had a few to drink i'm not that drunk anyways i was listening to the most recent i'm going to encourage all of you to leave voicemails specifically when you're drinking that uh, definitely won't come back to haunt you in any way shape or form so let's see what nick has to say after a couple of cocktails episode of real life today and it got to the point when you guys were talking about dennis grabishkov and how much wanye hates dennis grabishkov <laughs> and that time dennis grabishkov blocked a shot in the pills ruptured both his testicles and that got me to thinking what does a ruptured testicle look like <laughs> and if you no, we don't need to talk about what a ruptured testicle looks like i'm gonna guess you know what i'm gonna guess it looks like There's a dude on TikTok, and this is so fucking gross, and I hate that I know this, but there's a dude on TikTok that eats raw beef nuts. He cuts them in half and, like, slurps them out, and it's a whole disgusting thing. So what is it going to look like if you rupture a testicle? I'm going to guess something like a cracked egg, some kind of goo coming out of there, and not the kind of goo you're talking about, you perverts. Just the meat, the general meat is going to be leaking out. It's not going to be good. Don't Google it. Look for that guy on TikTok. He'll gross you out too. And I'm sorry for putting that in your brain if you haven't seen that guy because he is an absolute menace. You want to feel pain for half an hour over nothing, look up a ruptured testicle. And then that got me to thinking, you know. I will not be looking up a ruptured testicle. No. 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 Nick, I'm going to come to your house and block Google on your computer if this is the kind of shit you're Googling. You're never going to be prime minister like this, man. The fuck? Any sort of like testicle rupture injury has got to be the worst injury in sports. Like <laughs> I'd rather break my fucking femur than have any sort of testicle injury. Oh, no. Like, and, and I know the femur <laughs> would be longer, fuck? but the pain in that immediate aftermath, getting a slap shot to the nuts like old Matty Hendricks, that would... <laughs> I don't know if I could last it. I don't know if I can handle that. And you're thinking like all time hockey injuries, Clinton Larchuk for me comes to mind. I think I would rather take a skate blade to the fucking neck. 
and no, block a no, slap shot no, with my no no Nick, I'm cutting you off. You're on you're on you're unhinged today. You're unhinged. I don't want to talk about ruptured nuts or s- skates to the face. What the fuck, man? I have prepared a song. <laughs> it's something about Calgary. Mm. The shuttle dome. The shuttle dome. The shuttle dome is falling down. It's got doors and a window. The shuttle dome is falling down. <laughs> that was excellent. Donkey Volley checking in. Hey, Big Mouth. I don't know how much this is going on around the NHL, but I do watch a lot of NFL football. And last year and a couple of other times throughout, you know, the past couple of years, I've seen CGI versions of teams' logos come to life, kind of like the Panthers uh, had a, having a Black Panther kind of roam around their stadium, uh, like jumping all over the stands and stuff. And it looked super dope. Um, I think the Oilers initial startup sequence is a little bit lacking. Like I think bringing back an oil derrick or something to make it a little extra spicy would be fun as well as I was thinking that if they could make like a CGI thing for it, you could have the ice crack all the way up through center ice and just have it leak like a black, uh, what we would refer to as oil all over the ice until it turns like pitch black. And then you have the boys like skate out onto it and then have it, you know, slowly illuminate back to normal. I, th- I, I don't know. I thought it'd be super menacing and it looks super dope, but I'd like your thoughts on maybe the Oilers uh, doing a little more in their pregame for the fans to make it look cooler. I think with the way, like, I think about the playoffs and how good of a job the Oilers do with their intro in the playoffs. And I get it. It's a different level in the playoffs. and Everybody's hyped, and the place sounds like it's going to take off because it's so loud in there. But I'd like to see them do something too cool in there, too. Like, they've got all the tech. Like, those cameras or whatever the lights are that shine shit down on the ice and makes pictures, that's cool as fuck. So your idea is totally doable, I imagine. Whether or not they want to, I think it's a cool one. I don't know. I don't have a specific idea of what they could do with those things. But what I would say is maybe it's time to bring up some oily boys in that we've got a bunch of dirty dudes who have been up in the rigs and that is just what they come out with. They, they, they're like holding, you know how in Vegas they skate under the swords, like they're being knighted or some shit like that. Maybe the oily boys, in this case, the Fort Mac rig dudes, they're holding up some kind of like jerry can or something. I don't know anything about this industry, by the way. They're just holding up something and we skate under those. And it's like a salute. That's a bad idea. Don't listen to me. Oh, geez, Rick. Are you listening to podcasts again? Not just any podcast, Morty. It's the podcast. It's better late than never with bag milk. Shout out to the captain. I like the impressions that are coming out of the captain these days. I love that a lot. Beg milk. Is Oilers Nation ever going to do a Eastern Conference road trip? I thought it'd be dope, and I would buy tickets to do this as well, to go do almost like a Subway series over in New York, where the Oilers go, they play the Islanders, the Rangers, the uh, and the Devils all within, you know, one little sequence and Oilers Nation just as kind of like a little New York takeover. I know that'd probably be kind of pricey, but I don't know, man. That'd be uh, that'd be pretty dope. I kind of wanted to see if maybe that's ever been kicked around and you guys just kind of decided maybe not to do it because it's so expensive or if it hasn't been kicked around, you're welcome for the idea and I expect to see it next year. So to answer the question, yeah, we've absolutely batted that one around. The idea of going to... Um of going to New York, going to New Jersey, going to all those places. It just sounds amazing, right? We've pri- we've looked at it. The We've looked at maybe doing like an Ottawa, Toronto. We looked at doing Ottawa, Montreal. We looked at doing Florida. We looked at doing uh, Chicago Plus. We've looked at doing Toronto, Detroit. We've looked at a bunch of different combinations that are all geographically kind of, you know, that makes sense. The problem with going to a New York, as an example, one, it'd be amazing. The problem is just the cost. 
shit is expensive in New York. Like the hotels are crazy. The flights are crazy. So just when we try to put these packages together for travel, we try to make them affordable in the sense that we want the most people to come. We want this to be accessible and we don't want this to be a trip where only a certain amount of people can really afford it. And then it just prices itself out. So like when we think about New York, that was exactly what the problem was, was just the cost. Other ones, it's just the schedule. We tried to see if there was a way that we could get to Vancouver and to Seattle. We thought that would be cool if we could make up, find a way to make it work, but the schedule didn't work. The games of Vancouver this year suck. We tried to do a Ottawa and then jump on the train and go to Montreal the next day because there was a bunch, there was a couple of back-to-back matinees or something later in the year. We tried to price that one and it just wasn't feasible. So yeah, 100%, we would love to do different trips than just Vegas and just Nashville. But those ones we kind of have dialed in at this point. Those ones we kind of knock out in our sleep. I will say though, we are going to be launching a trip, another trip in November early November. So watch out for that one. It is a destination we have not done for a hockey game. There's a little teaser for you. That's what we call in the industry, a little teaser for you, Dan. Hey, Big Milk. Connor from Calgary again. What's up, Connor? I'm a big Blink fan, but I just wanted to say that Jawbreaker is the superior band, in my opinion. Plus, you wouldn't have to sell a kidney on the black market to go see them if they were to ever reunite and go back on tour. I love, you can leave me blank messages all day long. I want to also say just, that reminds me, I want to say thank you to everybody who's sending me blank stuff on Instagram. Don't stop. Slide into the DM. Send me videos. A lot of them I haven't seen before. Send me TikToks. They all make me laugh. I love it. But you are right, Connor. I did have to sell a kidney to get the tickets that I've got to Blink-182 <laughs> next year. Outrageously priced. I disagree with you on who's the better band, but this one is outrageously priced. I just knew I had to be there. I was going to be there. No matter what the cost was going to be, I was going to be there barring selling Frank. I was going to start an OnlyFans. I'll show my a b-hole, sell pictures of my feet. Sign up for my OnlyFans. That's how I afford my Blink-182 tickets. Thank you very much. Hey, Bag Milk. I have a question on jerseys. I was recently criticized for my Jack Campbell jersey for obvious reasons. But I'm still drinking the Kool-Aid, and I think he's going to turn this season around. I think he's just knocking off the rust. Game two is not any time to panic. But that aside, um, I was criticized and told that I should have bought a McDavid or Drysdale jersey uh, for people that are actually really good on the team. No. And although McDavid and Drysdale are super good, there's two reasons I don't want to buy their jerseys. I'm going to guess. Frank, thoughts? You don't want them to buy a McDavid jersey either? My thoughts are everybody has one, right? When we were down in Los Angeles for round one of the playoffs, we were walking around, and I think Tyler might have had his McDavid jersey on. Tyler or Jay, it doesn't matter. And there was a dude from L.A., a Kings fan, and he goes, is McDavid the only jersey that they buy? But then he saw Jay, and oh, it, was, it was Tyler wearing it. And then he saw Jay in a Latestu, and I was wearing a Nugent Hopkins, so his whole plan got thrown out. But... I'm going to guess it's because everybody has one. Be different, man. If you want to get a jersey of somebody that you like, if you're hearing the coughing coming through, because it's coming through on my microphones, that is me, missus. She's dying over there. But if you want to get a jersey, get whoever you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who you want. Get what you want. It doesn't matter what other people think. You don't have to get a dry saddle or McDavid because other people are saying that. Fuck those people. One, everybody else has them. That's Whenever what I you see a game in person or on the TV, all you ever see are dry settle and McDavid jerseys yep. in the stands. Yep. Two, I think this is hypocritical of me now that I'm saying it out loud, but because they haven't committed to the team past the extensions that come off their rookie deals, I don't want to buy their jerseys until then. Um, I don't know if this is wrong uh, of me to wait until that point, or I should just bite the bullet and get one or both. Um, but you know, my priority list goes Nugent Hopkins, Skinner, and then those two right now. Your thoughts? I completely buy your point of not wanting to get one because everybody has one. I love both those guys. I love Leon. I love Connor. I don't have either of their jerseys. I only have Nugent Hopkins jerseys. Get what you want. 
But the other the other angle, waiting for an extension to happen before you get those, don't worry about that. They're going to extend, barring some kind of collapse, a meet like a collapse that nobody sees coming in the skill of this hockey team. Listen, go back to listen to the Frank interview from a couple of weeks ago. We're gonna be fine. Go get that jersey, Playboy. If you want one, go get it. This is Captain Felton in Vancouver with your fair weather fan report. Canucks have blown three straight games with multi-goal leads. Four and so now. quads in the fan base can suck hard for Bedard. Back to you, Bag Milk. Uh, actually, it's four games now. If you haven't been paying attention, the Vancouver Canucks sent an NHL record for being the only team to start their season with four straight games, blowing multi-goal leads and losing. They did it again to Columbus last night. Shout out to the Canucks. Shout out to quads. So... First impressions of week one. I'm not too worried. Still pretty early. We're only three games in. But uh, defense needs to tighten up for sure. Uh, D's going to be a big issue. Amen. Uh, Ryan Murray doesn't look overly confident out there. Uh, another thing is with the forwards in front of the net. I uh, got a crash the net in today's game. I understand that. But when you're too close, like we saw three, four, five times last night. Easily. You can't just jab the puck under the pads when the goalie's hugging the post. Nope. You got to be far back enough that you can lift that puck over the pads. Yep. If need be. 100%. Uh, one other thing is basically try not to get too fancy. They're trying to set up all these wicked plays. Just put the puck on the net. Shoot the puck. Especially on the power play. Let that puck fly. Yeah, those tic-tac-toe plays are nice when every player on the ice touches that puck within 10 seconds, but sometimes you just got to fire that puck off and hope for a juicy rebound. So, yep, that's about it. Cheers. That message came in from Kamek, and it was basically like he reached into my brain and pulled out every single thought I had about the Oilers right now. Agreed all around. Boys need to get greasy. Stop going for the beauty goals. We like to watch him, but I would love to see you score with your face. I don't care how the puck goes in the net, provided that is legally done. Just do that. 100%. Perfect message. Amen. Uh. And beg milk to clarify my last message. I am learning to play goalie in ice hockey. I kind of gravitate towards the position. That's why I bought Campbell's jersey first. Also, his nickname is kind of silly. So I thought it'd be fun to have soup on my back. And that's why Skinner is, you know not the next jersey but the jersey after that i want to get as well also because edmonton boy edmonton boy plays for edmonton team can't can't hate the kid i agree so somehow dan's message got mixed in with other ones but yeah that's cool get whatever jersey you want like i said don't let other people dictate your fun you want to get a skinner jersey go get a skinner jersey you want a nugent hopkins jersey get a nugent hopkins jersey you want to get a mcdavid you want to get all of the McDavids and wear them on top of each other? Go do that. I'm not going to stop you. I think it's a great idea. Hey, Big Milk. LCYEG here. Um, my first impressions are basically they just need some more time to figure out how this exact roster works together. They weren't all even playing together in the preseason. So this is like preseason 2.0. Um if we're still at 10 games and they can't figure it out, like then I'm going to get worried. But all this listening to Tyler Uremchuk freaking out <laughs> like is just freaking me out. So first of all, he needs to settle. Second of all, let's pump the brakes and give these guys some time. I trust Woody. I trust Connor. I trust Leon. They'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, <laughs> side note. Super cool to meet you the other night at Soho, and thanks for a really cool event. Cheers, bag milk. Bye. It was good to meet you as well. Like I said, we probably chatted on Bcast and shit a hundred times. It was good to meet you in person. And I also appreciate anybody stepping in here to tell Tyler he needs to chill the fuck out. Hold up. Wait a minute. Last message of the week. Let's wrap it up. What's up, bitches? <laughs> I'm still alive. I was I was I was thinking recently and I shit you not that it had been a while since we've gotten a message from the queen. Obviously, obviously <laughs> something happened. But I'm happy to report at least here that it seems like the queen is alive and well. 
<laughs> Let's get back to it. Seems you aren't allowed to sell the weed to people in the UK. <laughs> so I faked my death and I'm on the rum. <laughs> Got a makeover and joined an S Club 7 tribute band. Oh, nice. Living my best life as a peasant. Life is great. <laughs> Fuck. Just wanted to let you know I will still listen to this radio show. <laughs> Lots of love, hugs and kisses. Well, Liz. Well, thank you, uh, Queen Elizabeth. I would love to see you perform in that S Club 7 cover band. So <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm glad that you checked in. I was worried about you. Uh, you know, after the news and all. I saw the news. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're I'm glad you're alive and well. And that wraps up the voicemail for another week for our friends at Trilogy of Food Rentals. What a shit show. This segment is always the weirdest thing ever. And I love it. Thank you very much for leaving the messages. Thank you very much for leaving the bumpers. I'm going to go, I think I'm going to do an impromptu episode of this podcast soon, and I'm going to clear out the bumper bars. There's a lot of cool shit coming in, and I feel like I'm recycling the same ones over and over again, so I need to label them better, maybe clear some out, clear some space for some new people that want to try some stuff. So I think that's how I'm going to do that. Maybe, Maybe this weekend, early game on Saturday. I think I got an evening by myself too on Saturday night, so... Maybe I'll do that on Saturday, a little bonus episode of Better Late Than Never, but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. If the Oilers win on Saturday, maybe I go out in celebration. Maybe I find Tyler. Maybe we go celebrate with some cocktails and tummy touches. I don't know. If not, maybe I'll do that. We'll clear out the bar. If you want to leave a bumper, of course, just let me know. It's a bumper, and I'll put you over there. We will walk through them, and I appreciate you chiming in on the podcast. I also want to say thank you to the audio department and to Trilogy Oilfield Rentals for sponsoring the show. If you want to do that, hit me up, bagmilk at oilersnation.com. Until Saturday, maybe, or next week, that's another episode of BLTN.